everyone keeps talking about AI and it's actually getting a little bit annoying because in fact, in the world of technology, there's a lot more happening than just AI. And this is what I'm gonna dive into today's video. I'm also going to explain a concept that I have coined and I like to call the perfect storm. And just like any storm, if you don't prepare for it, you will come out the other end worst off, battered, beaten and bruised. But if you do prepare for it with the tips I'm gonna give you today, then you will be really well prepared. It's gonna help you in your careers, it's gonna help you in your companies and ultimately everything that you do, to be very honest. So let's get straight into it. You know, the word AI is something that actually started in 1956 at Dartmouth University in New Hampshire, US. And there are rumors that, you know, there were also concepts like this existing in other locations around the world, in the UK, in Russia, and many other places. And so it's a really, really old concept. It's been around for about 70 years. And it's really important that people understand that there's been massive leaps and evolutions throughout the entire 70 year horizon. Um, you know, the first algebra uh, equation was solved by AI around, I think, the 50s or 60s. And then later on, you know, Alan Turing, a bunch of other people started to get involved. And the concept of creating artificial intelligence was created. Uh, and there were many AI winters as well, where really nothing really happened with AI for a very long period of time until computer, uh, computational power and memory and other things like that started to improve as well in the 90s. So a lot has happened in the traditional sense of AI, you know, concepts of neural networks, machine learning, algorithms, all of that has been put together. And the old way uh, that AI used to help companies was actually very cumbersome and very expensive uh, throughout the 80s and 90s and even the year 2000, early 2000s. So traditional AI, you know, is a concept that's been around for a very long time. But fast forward to today, you know, we're seeing generative AI as of a couple of years ago with the creation of OpenAI and many other companies from Y Combinator, Incubator and other places. And we have generative AI now. We have the ability to generate things based on training uh, models digitally on basically everything that's digitally available to us. And we're in this era uh, for quite a few years now, believe it or not. Um, it's been exactly around two years coming up very soon, uh, gonna be close to three years. And in that time frame, there's also something called super narrow AI. So these are super intelligent systems that can do specific things that humans can do, but better. So for instance, there are super narrow AI systems that can analyze uh, X-rays, CT scans, MRIs, better than any human or radiologist or doctor. And there are many others like that as well for our algorithmic trading uh, and banking. There's quite a few super narrow AIs already. So <laughs> that's AI covered, you know, 70 years of evolution. And we're coming to a point where, you know, when I was in Paris, a uh, GTC conference with Jensen Huang and his team, a bunch of other heads of AI, uh, we're there as well. And we all agreed that uh, artificial general intelligence will be around in the next two to three years. So, you know, by 2027, 2028, really, maximum 2030. And you probably heard another term called artificial superintelligence, ASI. And really, AGI and ASI were really the same thing for a very long time. But something that has started to happen, I've noticed in the last six months, is a distinction of what is AGI and what is ASI. So I'm gonna to try to artic articulate it to you, uh, but it's not official and it will be official one day, I hope soon, uh, through World Economic Forum and other great organizations like that. So AGI, Artificial General Intelligence, is being seen today as you know, the ultimate textbook intelligence an AI system that can pass every type of professional exam, uh, that can answer almost every uh, textbook problem, right? And is able to navigate screens with agency and, and do things which normal, very intelligent humans could do. Um, ASI's definition uh, is being coined as something a little bit more than just textbook intelligence. It's a little bit like intuition, um, being able to have consciousness uh, a feeling about something. It's, it's, the, it's the other forms of intelligence which are a little bit more like human-like. 
And the debates around that, when that's coming, uh, is, is, is very <laughs> debated. Is talking, people are talking about five to ten years from now, uh, or even longer for ASI. So I just wanted to bring that out there as well, because something I'm seeing in the market, and all of us in the AI circle are talking about this. So there is a slightly distinction between AGI and ASI coming up as well. But enough about AI. Let's talk about the other things which are actually happening at the exact same time, which you should be very aware of. So in the world of technology, there is a bunch of other technologies which are exponentially growing. There is IoT devices getting much smarter and much more integrated into AI. So for instance, you know, oil and gas companies are starting to use, or continuing to use, should I say, IoT devices to better manage oil and gas assets which are offshore. So Shell, for instance, has 50 million IoT devices in all of their oil and gas assets offshore, of which they have many, and they're connecting it up to AI in order to do analytics uh, to better understand how maintenance should work, predictive maintenance and things like that. There's also other things happening in the world of data exchange. So a lot of us in more, more economically developed countries we have fiber optic internet. We have internet which is 300 megabytes a second or sometimes even more. Um, of course, in less economically developed countries, <clears throat> we're still having issues with electricity and a bunch of other things like that. So internet is a far-fetched dream still. But there are many other countries also already starting to use 6G uh, mobile te telecommunications, which has hundreds of times more data exchange than 5G and 4G. And already 7G is starting to be created and developed and tested in some other countries as well, particularly in Asia. So, you know, and then we have Starlink. We have also satellite communications technologies, which are getting better uh, every single year and cheaper also to access as well. And also more competitors coming into the market too, other than just Starlink uh, from Elon Musk. So data exchanges are getting better. And why is this important for technology? Because we need data. We need data to train algorithms. And now that we've exhausted most of the internet text, we're getting into pictures and that's going being plowed through very, very quickly. And we're also getting into the era of consume as much video as we can as well to train algorithms. And videos are extremely heavy. So the better the data exchange, the better the algorithm will get trained. So that's data, and data is a very important piece of the whole technology world and communicating between devices, which is super important. The other thing which is happening exponentially as well is improvement in memory. So, you know, RAM is getting better, better DDR3, then we went to DDR4 and different versions of that as well. And memory is also getting stored in smaller spaces. So, you know, in order to have hard drives, uh, for a couple of gigabytes, you know, we used to need something the size of my hand a couple of years ago, and now we're getting to something to the size of my fingernail. So being able to save massive amounts of uh, storage of information into smaller spaces will make it easier to transport this data physically to other places and hold it, etc. So of course, uh, storing these massive uh, models, these massive data sets in order to help advance technology uh, is extremely important. And also the speed of saving that data is getting uh, multiple times better every single year. It's getting faster, it's getting safer as well. And loss of data is reducing exponentially every three years. So data has also seen a tremendous uh, exponential improvement in storage size, uh, how quickly that data is stored, and also how safely it is stored as well. The other thing which is developing at an immense rate, and I saw this at the NVIDIA conference a couple of weeks ago in Paris, is processing speeds. So processors, uh, GPUs, CPUs, uh, and everything we need for graphics and for running AI models, they're getting better and better and better every single year. Every year Jensen is announcing a new chip uh, a new CPU, a new GPU, and new stacks, and new ways of putting them together, which is allowing companies to do larger, more complicated um, algorithms, calculations, model uh, development, etc. So that's also developing at an immense pace. Of course, we, for the first time, are starting to see autonomous vehicles uh, in more cities and more countries. I was also in a robo taxi uh, a couple of weeks ago as well, reviewing that. Uh, it's quite incredible uh, how that's going to be launched already in Texas and a few other places. 
And of course, we have Waymo. We have a bunch of other uh, companies that have been using autonomous vehicles for even now a number of years, uh, especially in China. So autonomous vehicles is a pretty interesting example of combining intelligence with physical robots, in this case, a car that can drive by itself. So autonomous vehicles um, are, are going to definitely pave the way for many other forms of physical intelligence existing within our communities, within our world. And one thing I also uh, got to see a couple of weeks ago is the explosion of the amount of humanoid companies. So companies building um, rescue type uh, robotic dogs to do very difficult, dangerous work like disarming bombs or putting out fires. And I also saw a lot of humanoid technology being developed uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, robots that look and behave like humans in order to do house chores or again, dangerous jobs and tasks, which is a great application of humanoid technology. So, you know, humanoid technology uh, has exponentially grown over the last three or four years as well. Um, four years ago, we used to have maybe 12 to 15 companies that had over $100, $100 million uh, in funding to develop humanoid technology. Today, uh, we have um, near to 100 companies that have over $150 million in funding, uh, and that's going to continue to grow. It is predicted that the humanoid market is the largest uh, market opportunity uh, out of all. Uh, it's a trillion dollar plus market by itself. So humanoid technology is also expanding at an incredible rate. Um, then <laughs> the thing that we should not forget in this perfect storm of technology, which is happening right under our noses, is quantum computing. So quantum computing has seen tremendous leaps in terms of the materials which are being used, uh, the size of the quantum computer, uh, the price tag of these quantum computers, uh, many reports believe, and I've also started to see this in the market as well, that quantum computers will start to be acquired and used in the Fortune 500 companies about by the end of next year or the year after. So as soon as a company gets their hand on a quantum computer to do something very specific, it's going to become very difficult to compete with that company, especially if they're combining super narrow AI or then very soon AGI into quantum computing. And of course, when quantum computing comes out, uh, cryptography, the thing that keeps a lot of systems like blockchain safe, uh, are going to become under massive scrutiny and the whole blockchain market uh, might need to evolve as well. So look, I wanted to make this video because, like I said, I keep hearing about AI and maybe I'm a little bit biased, I'm a little bit more in that AI circle, but I'm sure a lot of you are hearing the word AI everywhere. I mean, it's in the news, it's in the sauna, it's in the gym, it's in the elevators, shopping malls, everybody keeps talking about it. But I wanted to make this video for people to understand that AI is a part of this perfect storm which is building on technology. And it's not because of just AI that our world will change significantly. It's because of many, many other factors. And like the ones I mentioned, it's gonna be because of data exchanges uh, getting faster, better memory, better processing speeds, um, better and smaller storage of memory, autonomous vehicles, humanoids, quantum computing, and a few others that I mentioned already. So I want you to really behave like this video that I've just made for you is a little bit like a weather warning. Just touch it. You can go oh, anywhere you want. That's so cool. <laughs> uh, where you need to take shelter and you need to stock up, you need to get ready. Because when you start combining all of these technologies that I've mentioned, and the fact that one day very soon, in a couple of years, AGI will start combining with human uh, robotics or humanoids or robotics of any sort, and then bring that intelligence, intelligence into the physical world, it's extremely important for you to see then, this is the reason why everyone is predicting that the world will change significantly over the next five to 10 years. And it's already happening as well. I would, I would argue that you know two or three years ago, the world is very, very different to how it is today. And when we take a snapshot three years from now, and we look back you know, to two or three years ago, the difference is gonna be very, very obvious. So I've told you about this perfect storm, but like a good weatherman, I need to tell you how to prepare for it as well. Otherwise, I would just be creating panic, but no solution, and that's not what I'm about. I'm here to help you prepare and to take the knowledge that I'm giving you and bring it to your advantage. 
So perfect storm coming, we got the concept. Then what do you do? So a lot of people ask me, should, you, should they be doing courses online? So my answer to that is yes, there are some courses worth taking, but it, you must make sure that it comes from a credible person and don't necessarily go for the most expensive course. Um, I see a lot of business schools, uh, you know, putting out courses for C-level executives, which is definitely not inclusive. And at a price tag of 20, 30, 50,000 pounds, right? So 60, 70,000 dollars, not everybody can pay for that. So what I would do is, yes, look for courses, but make sure it's from somebody credible. I've made a video about this before for you to be careful who you follow in AI, because it is such an important topic, it will impact your life. Um, so that's courses. Second thing is, I think nothing beats getting your hand dirty. Actually going and downloading all these models, going and download Anthropic, go and download OpenAI, go and download Perplexity, go and download Meta's Llama, go to Hugging Face, download a bunch of the free models there as well. You know, play with it. You won't get all of it as soon as you get your hands on it if you're not technical. Um, but even if you're non-technical, you can download these apps and just play with them and see what they can do. And one thing which is very important is, you know, don't always go for the free version. You know, it's, it's free for a reason. It is gonna have limited capabilities. So I would definitely invest in paying for one of these and then you get the full potential of what that model can do. And then you can probably better imagine, you know, why it's going to make such a big impact in the world that we live today. So definitely get a model, try it out, get your hands dirty. The third thing I would say is if you're an employee, I would definitely put your hand up for working on one of these projects at work. You know, applying this knowledge into real life scenarios, real pain points that you're seeing at work is gonna be really, really important. And if you own a company, uh, nothing beats starting an initiative where everybody starts looking at efficiency, start looking at embedding a lot of these technologies like AI and automation and digital transformation at work. So they can also, you know, save the company and also save themselves. Um, and the other thing as well is, you know, there's many tips, I can go on forever, but one of the most important and last tips here is definitely change your perspective and your opinion about AI. AI is saving lives, AI is making companies better, it is making a lot of work more interesting and safer. So, you know, looking at AI in positive light, I think is going to help you because transition is not easy, change is not easy. And I think it's very important for people to take a positive perspective on AI and look at the good sides of it. Of course, there's deep fakes. Uh, there's all kinds of things happening on that side. And there's all kinds of things happening, um, you know, bad actors using AI in the wrong way. And I would only accelerate over time. But just like a hammer can be used to build a house. And that's a great thing. It also can be used to hurt somebody. So I think it's very important you focus on the positives. And like I've said before in previous videos, you know, focus on your sphere of influence, the things that you can directly control, which is where you eat, who you hang out with, what you learn, etc. Uh, focus on that and don't let anxiety build up around you. I promise you, as you get your hands dirty personally on AI and at work or for your company, you will ultimately, you know, start understanding the topic better and your anxiety levels will drastically reduce as you start turning that anxiety into something useful, into something tangible, that is actually helping you move forward and lower those anxiety levels. So I hope this video was helpful. I really want everybody to understand it's not just about AI, which is funny because I'm like the AI guy, but I want you to understand that technology in general is advancing at incredible pace. And all of these topics that I mentioned, which is five, six, seven of them, um, they are all advancing at an incredible rate. And it's because of all of these components that it will snowball into something very large that will change ultimately the way we work and we live. So I hope this video was helpful. Any questions of any particular technologies you'd like me to cover, just leave it down in the comments below. Thank you and have a great day.